Prince Turki Al Faisal, thank you very much for coming to WPC uh, Television. You are well known as a major figure in the royal family of Saudi Arabia, former ambassador to the United States, and I think also former head of Saudi intelligence. So, when I ask you uh, what is the solution for the Islamic State, or Daesh, as you say it in Arabic, um, you will know better than most people. What is the solution? Well, I would start by saying that it is not Daesh, it is Fahish. And Fahish is, comes from the root in Arabic for Fuhsh, which means the worst of the worst. That's what I call them. Because to call them Daesh is, is elevates them to the position of being a state, of being Islamic, of combining both Iraq and, 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 and Syria or Sham. So I would not want to give them that privilege. And um, I think that is one of the reasons why I believe that Fahish is more of a temporary symptom of a disease that will unfortunately, if not treated well, if the disease is not treated well, we're going to have even perhaps deadlier symptoms coming in the future. As we saw now, Fahish comes from where? It comes from the womb of Al-Qaeda. Yeah. By not treating the disease that allowed Al-Qaeda to come into being, Al-Qaeda bore Fahish. And so this will continue if there are no solutions. And one of the problems, I think, particularly with the world community, and I wouldn't specify one country over another, is that our problems in the Middle East are treated in what I call the conflict management way, rather than conflict resolution. Yeah. So the world is, accepts that the Palestinian people continue to be occupied by Israel as long as that does not become a major problem for the world. And as we see in Syria, the world is willing to accept the killing of more than 200,000 Syrians because now it is confined to Syria. And in Iraq equally, since the American invasion of Iraq, the world is willing to accept Iraq as it stands today of ethnicities and sects that are fighting uh, each other. And to each of these problems, there is a solution. In Palestine, you have the Arab world have presented the Arab Peace Initiative, which has not been accepted by Israel. Yeah. But nonetheless, you have the quartet the United States, the European Union, the Russian Federation, and the United Nations. They have all agreed that the issue of Palestine can be resolved into a two-state solution with borders along the 67 uh, uh, border line with acceptable swaps to both sides and negotiated uh, uh, agreements on other issues between the Israelis and the Palestinians. But isn't one of the problems of the so-called Islamic State that it now makes the two-state solution virtually impossible from an Israeli point of view? They will I don't say, see why. Yeah, and it, but the Islamic State is, is, is not a new phenomenon. If you remember, there was, there was Al-Qaeda before it. Before Al-Qaeda, we had the Palestinian terrorist groups, Abu Nidal uh, and, and all the other uh, terrorist activity. That did not prevent the United Nations from passing Resolution 242, which Israel accepted. So the two-state solution has been on the ground since 1967, long before the so-called Islamic State, which I would say, I would insist on calling Fahish. So from my point of view, that should not prevent us from achieving peace between Israel and the Arabs. And that is one way of resolving the issue of Fahish. Because you remove from Fahish's propaganda the plight of the Palestinian people, which they're using now yeah. 
Yeah, absolutely. You know, to expand their, their influence among Muslims everywhere. A final provocative question, which yeah. was sort of asked in the meeting. Um, isn't there a connection between jihadism in its worst forms, in the form of so-called Islamic State, and Salafism or Wahhabism, what you want to call it? And the irony is that it is threatening the kingdom. It is a sort of blowback to the kingdom. And, and this is one of the, the if you, I, I would say, the most misconceived ideas, particularly in the West mind, that the kind of, of, of brutality practiced by groups like Rahish and Al-Qaeda derive from so-called Salafism and Wahhabism. If you look at the word Salaf in Arabic, its true meaning is antecedent. And the Salafis, the genuine Salafis, refer their religious practice to what was called in Arabic culture and, and history the golden age of Muslims at the time of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, and in the first 200 years after his death. That's where the Salaf is. It is the, in Sunni Islam, it is the four principal Sunni uh, teachers whom all Sunni Muslims follow one or the other. We in Saudi Arabia, in our judicial system, we follow all four of these teachers. They are Ibn Hanbal, Ibn Malik, uh, Abu Hanifa, and Shafi'i. And these are not the brutal Absolutely. progenitors of Fahish. So that's one aspect. Wahhabism, on the other hand, is a term we in Saudi Arabia do not define ourselves as Wahhabis, because it implies that we follow another sect than the Sunni sect. We are followers of the Salaf, of Ibn Hanbal, Abu Hanifa, Shafi'i, and Al-Maliki. And it is this also misconception in the West that so-called Wahhabi Salafi progenitors of Fahish is what brought about this, this, this really horrible um, uh, situation we have, we have today. And I think the West in general, and particularly in the media, you have to be very careful how you use these terms. Um, it, it's like saying, for example, someone is a leftist yeah. without definition of what a leftist is. And it becomes kind of meaningless. Well, yeah. absolutely. Inshallah, we'll be better. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Yeah. Faisal.